Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremt News at 11. I'm Mark Hanrahan. Spokane County Prosecutor Larry Haskell is apologizing and trying to distance himself from racist comments his wife made online. Last week, the Inlander reported that Leslie Haskell called a black woman the N word and boasted about being a proud white nationalist. New tonight, Kremt News' Kyle Simchuk is looking into the hateful comments and the reaction they are getting. Well, Larry Haskell holds a very powerful elected position. He sounded, sent out a statement saying he does not share his wife's views, nor does his office. A Spokane Human Rights Commissioner we talked to says he wasn't surprised to see Ms. Haskell use the N-word because it's not the first time she's made racist comments. Looking at Leslie Haskell's verified account on Gab, an alternative social media network popular with conservatives and extremists, you'll see cute animal pictures and posts about God. But scroll through her comments, and it doesn't take long to find hateful posts against Muslims, members of the LGBTQ community, and African Americans. As first reported by the Inlander, Haskell commented on a New York Post story titled, MSNBC's Joy Reid, Conservatives Would Trade Tax Cuts to Openly Say the N-Word. Haskell replied, quote, she is the true definition of the N-Word. Haskell typed out the full slur. She also used the word online last August. In another post, Haskell boasts about being a proud white nationalist. She's also posted about how the white race is dying and that people need to make more white babies. Call a well-respected journalist and attorney a n is quite uh, offensive. Spokane Human Rights Commissioner Anwar P. says Haskell's comments are outrageous, but not surprising. Back in 2015, Haskell said she doesn't trust Muslims no matter what. She does not like people of color or anybody that's different than her. Haskell has also bragged online about her husband being the county prosecutor, saying, quote, he's the last line of conservative armor Spokane County has. Larry Haskell is up for re-election this year. How about being a human, Larry? How about addressing the fact that your, your community here is hurting because your wife's statements? Larry Haskell posted a statement on the prosecutor's website saying he does not tolerate racial bias or discrimination in any form, apologizing for his wife's comments, saying in part, I want to strongly reassure everyone that what was expressed in the Inlander and my wife's comments are not my views, nor the views of the prosecutor's office, nor should they ever be. And Sheriff Ozzie Knezovich is quoted in the Inlander saying he hasn't seen the recent posts, but has talked to Larry Haskell and his wife about them in the past, calling them totally inappropriate. Mark. I believe this bill will strike a much needed balanced approach that provides our law enforcement the tools they need to keep our community safe while retaining the important principles of police accountability that were passed last year. Also new tonight, Spokane Mayor Nadine Woodward testified before the Law and Justice Legislative Committee. She testified in support of a Senate bill that would revert the standard for law enforcement making a stop to use reasonable suspicion rather than probable cause. Mayor Woodward says she thinks the bill would provide a clear definition of use of force and the ability to use reasonable force when someone is suspected of having a dangerous weapon. New information, police have arrested a fourth teen now who escaped out of Echo Glen Children's Center last week. The teen was arrested in Kent this afternoon. Today, the King County Prosecuting Attorney's Office filed charges against four of the five teens. A charging decision for the 15 is expected next week. All right, let's take a look at our weather now locally. Meteorologist Thomas Patrick joining us now from the Outdoor Weather Center tonight. Thomas, it's already cold and it's going to get a bit colder tonight. That's right, and that's because we have some more clear skies to work with this evening. So instead of just being stable temperature wise in the 20s, we're going to see these values drop well into the teens, if not even single digits, especially for our northern areas. That plus you factor in even the slightest of breeze and we're getting wind chills that even make it feel like 14 degrees as of right now. But waking up first thing tomorrow morning right around sunrise. These will be the approximate temperatures around 10 degrees in Spokane, 9 in Coeur d'Alene. You see all these single digits across the northern tier of the inland northwest. So one of the coldest mornings that we've had in a while, though not the coldest we've felt so far this winter. And as mentioned, even a slight five or six mile per hour breeze doesn't seem like much, but it takes those temperatures could push wind chills down to around zero degrees or even below for some areas. So obviously quite cold but it will be short lived. We'll show you how our temperatures rebound later on this week in a few minutes. Good, Thomas, thank you very much. Now tonight, beat with a quick look at today's top stories. Today, the Freeman community continued sharing how the deadly school shooting in 2017 changed their lives. The bullets flew towards my room. 
and he ran out of bullets just outside of my door. In fact, I know that he tried to shoot Emma a second time as she was entering my room. This morning, a Freeman High School teacher told the judge what he witnessed just moments after the first gunshots were fired on the second floor hallway. One teacher says he heard several loud pops, then the thunder of student footsteps and screaming. He secured his classroom with several students inside. In about five minutes from now, we'll hear more about his perspective the day of that shooting. It was just uh, some random thing. Um, it's not a hate crime or anything like that. It doesn't anything related to that, but except just, you know, a stray bullet. An update now on last night's breaking news. A stray bullet came through the door at the Best Asian Market in the Spokane Union or Sprague Union District. Rather, when police arrived, they found a bullet hit a bag of rice. Manager Tom Chu, who you just heard from there, says he wants customers to know they should not be afraid and explains the shooting was not targeted and the area is safe. No one was hurt. If you have any information, you're encouraged to call Crime Check. The man arrested for a South Hill shooting last week was supposed to appear in court this morning. The court scheduled 65 year old Gary Cottrell for an arraignment at 930, but he didn't show up. You may recall he's the suspect who allegedly shot someone in the face after he was confronted about slashing tires in that neighborhood. His counsel told the judge Cottrell was not able to make it for medical reasons, so the judge rescheduled the arraignment for one week from today. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson's office filed a lawsuit against a company alleging invalid and false tests and billing the government for $124 million. The Center for COVID Control has been running nearly a dozen testing sites all across the state, and the AG filed a lawsuit yesterday stating the company improperly took patient information information and provided invalid COVID-19 test results, or at times, no results at all. State Attorney General Bob Ferguson says staff with the Center for COVID Control said they were instructed to lie to patients daily. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, just text us the word night to 509-448-2000 and we'll send them directly to your phone. Well, the owners of the Bellevue home destroyed in a landslide two weeks ago are being sued by the city. They are working to reach an agreement that allows them to access their things during the demolition process. And that's been the back and forth since the home belonging to John and Barbara Surdy slid off its foundation after a water main break and landslide two weeks ago. Court documents indicate the Surdy's have not been responsive to requests and the city says they've made consistent efforts to work with them. Now the city wants a judge to speed up the demolition process of that home, saying it's a danger to people and to neighboring homes. Tonight, tensions continue to grow on the border between Russia and Ukraine. This comes as more U.S. military equipment arrives in Ukraine. Russia's Vladimir Putin discussed the conflict, saying the U.S. was trying to contain Russia, explaining that, quote, Ukraine is just a tool, unquote. Now, roughly 100,000 Russian troops are stationed on the border, although Moscow insists they have no plans to invade. Tonight, thousands of people have not been able to return home after evacuations in North Carolina because of a fire at a nearby fertilizer plant. That fire started in Winston-Salem last night. The estimated 6,500 evacuated were within a one mile radius of the plant. This comes after officials worried about a potential explosion due to the chemicals at that site. One student is dead tonight, another in critical condition after a shooting outside of a school near Minneapolis. Both victims were found shot on the sidewalk near the front entrance of South Education Center in Richfield. Police have since arrested two suspects. They say they're not looking for anybody else. And take a look at this. It is wild video. A British Airways plane tried to land at a London airport, but had had to abort that landing due to strong winds. My goodness, you can see that plane try to land right there. Those high winds were as strong as 75 miles per hour coming from the North Sea. Glad I was not on that plane. All right, don't go to bed just yet. Coming up in two minutes, we'll share the perspective of a Freeman High School teacher as he recounts the events of the shooting, what he witnessed just moments after the gunfire. Plus, later in the broadcast, Spokane City Council member Jonathan Bingle has officially been censured by the council. So we'll explain what that means. We're back in just 90 seconds.